Guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about a topic that is becoming more and more of a conversation piece. In fact, rarely a day goes by that someone doesn't say to me, Heath, why is this not on 4K? Or Heath, why is this not on Blu-ray? We're talking about home media releases. Of, of course, we realize in the last few years, the home media landscape has changed drastically. You can no longer walk into your Walmarts or your Best Buys or Targets and see aisle after aisle of media. It has gone to a niche market. It's a boutique collector market now. And the boutique labels are doing a great job of serving the smaller but more passionate audience. And they're doing that largely through Blu-rays and 4Ks. But it costs a lot of money to make Blu-rays and 4Ks. And that's even if you can in the first place, if the original elements exist. When it comes to old TV shows, old movies, the older it is, the more obscure it is, the more unlikely it is that the restoration, that the elements are there for a restoration. If they are there for a restoration, if they've been perfectly preserved in a vault for the last 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, if they've been perfectly preserved, then you do have the elements, talking about 35 millimeter film prints, you do have the elements to do a restoration, but restorations are expensive. I've it varies per project, but I've heard upwards of thousands of dollars per hour of content. So a movie, a 90 minute movie is going to cost less than a TV show, but you're still looking at four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 or up. If, shoot, if you want to do a 4K scan, it's going to be way more expensive. An 8K scan is going to cost, right now it's going to cost you an incredible amount of money, thousands upon thousands of dollars. But for a TV show, depending on how long that TV series ran, you're looking at an investment of many, many thousands of dollars. If it's three to five thousand dollars per hour and you're talking about a hundred hours of television, then we're talking about a serious investment. We're talking about potential bankruptcy to invest in something that's not going to sell. And that's another thing we have to remember is it has to sell. It's a product. It has to sell. Is the audience there to support that? You know, we seem to place DVD in the rear view mirror because so many fans have moved on to 4Ks and Blu-rays, but DVD is still the market king. DVD still accounts for roughly three out of every four media purchases. It's a 65 to 75% market share every single month, every single week. The numbers vary, right? It goes up, it goes down, uh, but most of the people who are still buying discs worldwide are buying DVDs. We that love 4Ks and Blu-rays are a, we're the smallest market of the disc buyers. We got to remember that. We don't speak as the majority. We speak as the minority. We have the lowest, the smallest market share for that. 4K disc sales represent the smallest market, market share of any home media format. So we got to remember this when we're talking about uh, these restorations that we want to see. But if the, if the materials are there and the fan demand is there, then studios or distributors are willing to take a chance on that. And I'm so grateful that they do. Uh, but I think we need to be realistic and remember that most, when the transition happened from DVD, from VHS to DVD, there's a lot of stuff that is forever trapped on VHS that did not get the upgrade to DVD. DVD to Blu-ray, same situation. A lot of stuff trapped on DVD that's never going to get a Blu-ray restoration, either because of lack of elements or because it, the interest isn't there and the money just isn't there. That's the reality. So as movie fans, I like to say, we can't afford to be format snobs if we're movie and TV show fans because we're lucky to be able to see some of this stuff to begin with. Some of this stuff hasn't been touched in 30 years. Some of this stuff only exists in tape masters. Tape masters. Uh, so from 4K, from Blu-ray to 4K, only a select few, only the most popular and most mainstream, the most sure sellers are ever going to get a 4K release. That's growing and I can see more companies taking risks on 4K. A lot of boutique distributors and, and the, the real niche market collectible uh, companies are taking more chances on 4K. But we can't take it for granted that that's always going to be there. And we also have to remember that what we've already bought sends the signal on what's coming next. So if you want such and such product on 4K or Blu-ray, did you buy the Blu-ray or the DVD? If you want uh, the TV show that you love from 1972 on Blu-ray, but you don't own the DVD, you've sent no message to the parent company that you want that. 
that that's something that you'd be willing to support. Studios and distributors use past sales as a guide for what to put out next. That's how it works. They say, well, we know there's interest in this. Because a lot of people say, I want so-and-so. And then a company will put out so-and-so and they'll go, I'll buy it on sale. And then they never do. Or they grab it on clearance, which doesn't help the company out at all. They've now lost money putting that out. You have to support stuff with your dollars and you send a message with every product that you buy that you're willing to support the next thing. So uh, 4K remains the niche market for only the most popular, only the safest of bets. Then we also have to talk about the lack of elements, right? There are a lot of shows that were shot on videotape. You could make a videotape source, uh, you could probably get that up to around 720p because videotape holds a lot of, we're talking about like two inch tape and stuff, that holds a lot of data on that, uh, that format, but it's not, Getting a, a true HD signal out of that, that's diminished returns. Uh, so that's tape. Which I'm thinking most of the sitcoms from the 80s, right? I'm thinking Family Ties. I'm thinking Three's Company. I'm thinking all the stuff that, uh, that, I, that I remember fondly from my own childhood stuck on tape. You know, stuck. I'm happy with the DVDs because that's about as good as it's ever going to get. Um, but we also have to remember with film elements, that stuff erodes over time. So there's a lot of film elements that are just gone. They're just gone and they're not coming back because once the 35 millimeter or the, the interposite, but once that stuff starts to degrade, if it's not saved and it's not going to be saved unless it's financially profitable to save it, it's gone for good. So we have movies that only exist on DVD now because the original elements are lost. Maybe they had a scan 25 years ago when DVD was brand new and that's the last time they're ever going to get a scan because you can't scan anything else. We also have to consider all the fires and the earthquakes and the floods in California and Hollywood where this stuff is actually made. Uh, tons of casualties to natural disasters and to studio fires. Stuff that's never coming back around. So when people say to me, hey, why no 4K? Well, either it wasn't profitable or it's not a safe bet or the DVD or the Blu-ray didn't sell super well. Or there are no elements to make a 4K. There's a lot of reasons why that could be possible. And for why not a Blu-ray? Because Blu-ray, especially for a TV show, is extreme. I'm like many, like scores of thousands of dollars. You know, the Star Trek The Next Generation experiment uh, needs to be remembered. Star Trek, we a lot of us love Star Trek. We love The Next Generation. Paramount took great... They took a great leap of faith restoring that for Blu-ray. Went back to the original film elements. There was some stuff that they couldn't find, so they upscaled the original, uh, the original transfer. But most of it, they went back to the film elements at huge cost, and they set the retail price at a, at a, at a place where they could recoup their investment, right? And then those discs did not sell. The last I heard, I, I haven't checked the statistics in a while, but years on, it still had not turned a profit. Uh, so now it's used being used as a as a a hook for streaming services, and it has become a cautionary tale for everybody else. Hey, if you spend this money, you might never see it again. You might never get it back, and the fans will leave you twisted in the wind. So there's a lot of reasons why stuff doesn't come to 4K or DVD. I like to say that as movie fans and TV show fans, we cannot afford to be snobs about formats. We cannot be 4K only. We cannot be Blu-ray only. We have to embrace whatever is uh, what's available. And as I say again, we vote with our wallets. We vote with our dollar. You support, every release that you support is sending a message to whoever owns that, that there is interest in this. So just things to remember. And of course, that's just my take, but I'm eager to continue the conversation in the comments below. Hopefully that answers the question uh, to the best of my ability. And it's, it's clear because again, so much, this is coming up more and more as 4K becomes more popular and as we get further and further from the DVD era. There are movie fans that are huge, uh, passionate fans right now that do not remember a time before DVD. They are younger than the DVD, DVD format, which is 25 years old now. And, and that's when this video is going up. 25 years when this video goes up. Uh, so times are changing, but sometimes we gotta deal with the best that we have. A lot of this stuff, DVD is the last stop. A lot of the stuff, Blu-ray is the last stop. 4K is certainly not an assurance. It's the riskiest of formats, it's the smallest of formats, and it's the one that is the biggest uh, potential risk taker. It's the, it's the biggest leap. So support what you love, and we'll continue this conversation in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.